Hi everybody, it's a boring day at the museum. Nobody's here, I think the snow scared everyone away. So let's go take a look around the museum. Let's go on a virtual field trip and I'll show you around. So we're on the second floor of the museum right now. These are all of the permanent exhibits and this is the first room. This is the first gallery space. So over here we have John Huss who was a Catholic priest in the 13 and 1400s. Can you see his information? There you go. Pause the video if you want to read about him. Um, but he is where the Moravian Church tr can trace its roots back to. Then we've got John Amos Comenius, father of modern education. He's the reason why we have pictures in our textbooks. And he was a bishop of the church, so he's really important. Then we've got Count Zinzendorf. And there's his information. And so he is where we get lots and lots of history from the Ravian Church. And he is who we trace our roots back to. And then we have David Zeisberger, who is huge in mission. And a lot of what we know about Native American culture is because of all of his research and working with the Native Americans and writing it all down. The other cool stuff we have in this room, we've got this awesome image right here. Um, this is called, I am the vine, you are the branches. It's in German, but that's what it translates to. And so this is your basic family tree of the Moravian church. So each one of those shapes on there is a different Moravian church or a settlement or a congregation somewhere. Okay, so then we have this. This is the international settlement scene, if it'll focus. There we go. So everything in here is a Moravian settlement somewhere, but it's not like a map. So everything that's listed here is not in the same geographical location. So in the middle of it, you've got Herrenhut. That's in Germany. All of that stuff down there, that's Bethlehem. And a bunch of those buildings probably look really familiar. Over here, we've got Moravian stuff in the Netherlands, and up there, we've got Moravian settlements in England, and over there, we've got Moravian settlements in the Caribbean and Africa and other places. And then underneath it, we've got this awesome sea chest, which belonged to George Golkowski. He was the surveyor who came to Nazareth and brought his big gigantic compass and put it down and said, North is that way. Build the streets that way. And his trunk had lots of papers and important information and documents in it. And it's really cool and it looks like a pirate chest. Because yay, pirates of Penzance. Okay, cool piece of furniture. We have a clock. This was made here in Nazareth in the 19th century. It's more 19th century than 18th century. Uh, but it was made by the Beidel family, which is a very important Moravian family in Nazareth. And they were important clockmakers. And then this is another fun clock. This one was not made anywhere around here. This was made in Germantown, which is closer to Philadelphia. But it's a really cool piece of furniture. And then we have another gigantic clock. So these are the clockworks that were inside the clock that was here in Nazareth. And that clock face, I'm not sure if you can see, that clock face is about five feet tall. This is an electricity machine. This is a really cool piece that we have here at the museum. This basically does what the Ben Franklin experiment with the kite and the key in the thunderstorm did. And the single brothers in Bethlehem had it. We don't know why they had it. We don't know what kind of experiments they were doing with it. But it's pretty cool. Okay, so all of these firearms, uh, with the exception of a couple of them, were made by William Henry. He was the official gunmaker for the Moravians. Uh, he started out with his gun factory in town, but then he moved it north of town because he would test all of his guns with a triple charge of powder right outside his house, and all of the neighbors complained. So most of these are local except for this one. This one is an Indian trade musket. And then this one, the darker colored one, was made by Brother Albrecht at Christian Springs. And he was the one who taught the single brothers um, how to make firearms and weapons. And he's where William Henry learned gun making from. This is a really cool piece. This is an organ made by David Tannenberg in 1776. And it's a really important musical instrument 
for lots of reasons. One of them is that George Washington actually listened to this instrument when he came through Bethlehem during the Revolutionary War. And the other musical reason of importance is that this organ represents the link between the old German style of organ making and the newer American style of organ making. And the cool thing is that it still works today. You can still play it, except I'm not going to play it for you because it's too humid right now and it's got a cipher. And so if I play the organ right now, it's just going to make really squeaky sounds. But if it weren't as humid, then I would totally play it for you. Another really cool thing we have at the museum. So this, in that little case right there, that is a lock of George Washington's hair. As in, when he was visiting Bethlehem, one of the single sisters came up and was like, yo, can I have a piece of your hair? And he's like, sure, because that was just a cultural thing that they did right now, or back then. So we have a lock of George Washington's hair. It's really cool. So this is a tile stove. And the really cool thing about this is that they would have been super, super expensive. Uh, but the Moravians used them because it was a whole lot more economical for them. Uh, they heated the bigger buildings really, really well. And the tile radiates heat a lot better than just an open fireplace wood or a coal stove. Then we've got all of these paintings, lots of religious paintings. Um, the Moravian painter in the 1740s and 50s was John Valentine Height. So he did all of these religious artwork paintings. They were meant to be placed in the churches. So they're kind of like an audiovisual aid that when the pastor is reading the scriptures out of the Bible, then you can just look up and see all of the Bible stories that, that are there and you have a visual of what's going on. And now we've got musical instruments for all of you music lovers out there, because I know there are so many of you. So let's see, where shall we start? Let's start over here. So this is a Martin guitar. Martin still makes guitars today, but this one's from about the 1850s. The Martin Guitar Factory is here in Nazareth, and the only reason why Martin ended up here is because his wife had connections to the Moravians in Nazareth when they moved here. Originally, he started in New York City, but he couldn't get his factory going there. It just wasn't successful. Successful. So he moved here, and now Nazareth is famous for Martin guitars, so that's pretty awesome. We've got a flute, we've got a clarinet, we've got a bassoon, we've got a full set of trombones. So normally you just see one side of trombone in band, but this is the full set soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And we've got a violin, we've got some other string instruments over here. And then we've got some really cool keyboard instruments. So that one is an upright piano. They're super, super rare. Um, it's also called a clavis ethereum or a pantalone, but those are hard to say. So we're going to go with upright piano. Then we've got these two. So the one on the bottom is a clavichord, and it was made by the same maker as the organ that you just saw. And then the next one up was made by his student. Then over here, we've got a piano. This was made by Anton Meyer, and this is the only piano known to have been made in Nazareth. It was from a time when Nazareth was a closed community, and you had to be a Moravian to live here. And Anton Meyer was not a Moravian, so he asked the church leaders if he could move to Nazareth and start a piano factory. And he made this piano just to show them what he wanted to do. And the church leader said, no, we don't want a piano factory here. So Anton Meyer just left the piano. He took off. We don't know what happened to him. We don't know if he ever became a famous piano maker. But it's okay because Nazareth is famous for Martin guitars. We've got a violin, which was made by John Antes in 1759. And this, to our knowledge, is the oldest violin made in North America. So unless you can find one older than 1759, this one's it. It's pretty awesome. And then we have another piano, beautiful piano, just really, really pretty woodwork on here. Uh, this one was made by Maltainer in Bethlehem. And gorgeous piano, lovely, lovely instrument, except it's really, really heavy because that soundboard is pure iron. I had to help move this piano in here when we first got it at the museum and we just put it in this corner and we haven't moved it since and it's probably going to stay there forever because that's what you do with museums. Um, so don't try to move the piano. It's heavy. 
And we have some more artwork. These were done by John Valentine Height, same painter as the other paintings you saw. And this is what Moravians were wearing in the 1740s and 50s. His outfit is pretty much what other gentlemen of the colonial era would have been wearing. Only difference is he's wearing his hair down. Her outfit is significantly different than other ladies of the time period. Um, she's wearing specifically Moravian cap, Moravian jacket. It's a very unique Moravian style. Then we've got another vital clock. And then we have this lady over here. Now we don't know who she is and we don't know who painted her, but we do know that she's about the 1830s or 40s. And because she uh, is wearing a different style cap, different style clothes than her, so you can see that her hair is showing a little bit more. Uh, if I zoom in there, she's got earrings. Um, she's got um, more of a uh, traditional outfit of the 1830s. And then over here, we've got more artwork. This is by Gustav Grunewald. He shows up in art history textbooks a lot. He was really famous for doing landscapes. Uh, but this specific town here, this is Hope, New Jersey, and that was a Moravian settlement. And this is our missions room. All of the artifacts in this room came from a Moravian mission to somewhere. And hopefully, as you have learned, Moravians did mission work everywhere. Uh, they went to hot places like Africa, the Caribbean, South America. They went to cold places like Alaska and Labrador and Greenland. And so all of the artifacts here came back with a missionary, came back from all of these various places. So there's a whole lot of stuff here. I'm just going to walk through so you can get a basic idea of all of the stuff we have. And I guess if you have any questions, you can find me sometime and ask me about some of the specific stuff that you see. But uh, lots and lots of mission stuff and missions to all over. And let's go see what's on this side of the room. Because there's more artifact cases over here. Uh, there we go. Native American stuff. Awesome. And there we go. And now we're right back to where we started. So I hope you had fun. Bye.